The report of the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade is the bombshell that is reverberating across the political landscape of the country and Connecticut today. So what does this unprecedented leak mean? Who would leak it and why? And what will the ultimate impact be to women's rights? I'm joined by constitutional law expert Steve Gillis, professor of law at Quinnipiac University. Thank you so much for being with us, professor. Absolutely. Well, let me start with <clears throat> what would it mean if this is the actual opinion, if this were the actual opinion instead of what it is, which is a draft opinion yep. that was circulated several months ago. But let's assume that the court does make this decision, that a majority votes to overrule Roe v. Wade and Casey. What does that mean? It means every state will get to decide what kind of abortion laws it wants. And the predictions, you can read the New York Times today and see them, uh, from, are, are that roughly half the states will keep the types of laws that Roe v. Wade said every state has to have. Abortion will be legal in New York State and Connecticut um, through most of pregnancy if not all, and states can go farther if they want to and allow abortions through all nine months. But in a, probably half the states will put on tight restrictions on abortions, all the way, you know, forbidding any abortions or limiting the time within which a woman can have an abortion. That's what it will mean, and that means lots of state-by-state -state, uh, battles over what abortion laws should look like. Right. The predictions are that much of the South and the Midwest have laws ready to go, that they could completely ban it or on some level make it very difficult, like we've seen in some of these other laws. Let's talk about the Supreme Court justices. If this draft opinion is true, and, and we should say it's a draft, uh, if, uh, how did they get there? How did they, why would they find fault so many years later in something that I think most people assumed was untouchable? Well, the opinion uh, explains in detail and depth why Roe v. Wade got the history of abortion wrong, um, but it also explains why the test that the court used for whether there is a fundamental right in Roe is the wrong test in the abortion context. And just briefly, uh, here's the idea. Um, one of the tests the Supreme Court has used for fundamental rights is whether the right was deeply rooted in our nation's history and tradition. Okay. And there was no right to an abortion, to an elective abortion in the United States until a few states began recognizing that right in the 1960s. Until then, states beginning in the 1800s, states had prohibited all abortions throughout pregnancy except to save the life of the mother. So here, what the majority draft opinion says is, under the deeply rooted in tradition test, Roe was not just wrong, it was completely wrong. And therefore, stare the, 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 even though it's a precedent that's been around for half a century, therefore, the court should uh, return the issue to the states. So from the perspective of what this could mean, you, you talked about that this is a draft. It was done in February. Do these drafts, tend to change a lot, or do we expect that this is really where the court is leaning? So in terms of votes changing, um, I think it's unusual for votes to change, but it's happened before. It happened in Casey. Justice Kennedy voted to overrule Roe at conference. There were five votes to overrule Roe in 1992. Kennedy changed his mind months after that vote. That could happen. That could be happening now. We don't know. Um, but let me say another thing, Kara, about the, the way, one of the things that's bad about this leak, putting all politics aside, is that the Supreme Court's opinion process is, involves an ongoing debate among the justices, even after they vote. They don't change their votes very often, but sometimes they do. We don't have a dissent here. We don't know what the dissenting justices are going to, what arguments they're going to make in response to the, to the majority opinion, the draft. And that majority opinion might change because of the way the arguments the dissent makes. Um, that process has now been sort of blown up, right, by this leak. And that, that is very damaging to the court, to the dynamics on the court, not mm. to mention the, the possibility of a kind of a breach of trust by, by a clerk um, or even conceivably by a justice. Well, the uh, right, you said all politics aside, the ethics of this leak, I mean, the Supreme Court 
is the one of the most tight-lipped, if not the most tight-lipped organizations in our country. Leaks don't happen, even though leaks flow all over D.C. It's not customary. That's sort of the sacred space. What does it say about where we're at as a country if we start getting leaks from the Supreme Court? And what do you think the purpose of the leak was? So as to the purpose of the leak, I, I really feel like um, we just don't have enough information. It is true that some uh, prominent critics of, uh, prominent defenders of, of abortion rights, um, you know, have sent out tweets saying this was a, a great way to put some pressure on the court before it's too late and make them see that what the American people want. But those people are outside the court. Who knows what, what, what whoever did this, what their motivation was. Um, so, but just to come, come back to the impact on the court, um, it isn't true, Kara, that there have been no leaks. It's what is true is that a draft opinion hasn't leaked. Okay. So there were leaks in the famous first Obamacare case. Um, there were rumors flying around and, you know, enough rumors that, that some in the press uh, picked up the story that Chief Justice Roberts had kind of changed his vote during this, during this long process between the initial oral argument, the first vote, and when the opinions came down. And, you know, I think someone has written a whole book uh, claiming to know the inside scoop on that. So it's not, it hasn't been hermetically sealed off, but there's such a huge difference between rumors about votes possibly changing and reading a 65-page opinion, which is what I did last night when Politico put this up on the web. Yeah, I mean, it was shocking, I'm sure, to most people to have a full draft like that leaked. That, I guess, would be the part that's unprecedented. Um, I, yes. I, I, I um, I'm mindful of time. We are going to be covering this from every angle coming up on Eyewitness News at noon, so I want to invite people to tune in. Also, our state is having its own news conference on women's reproductive rights coming up at 1230. And as you said, if you're living here in Connecticut, you're probably not going to see much of a change because we have fully committed to keeping our laws that allow a women's right to choose in place, right? I think that's right. There may be there may be some attempts to pass a restrictive abortion law in Connecticut, but I think it would be surprising if it were enacted. And Kara, that I want to mention something here about changes in our society over the last 50 years. Yes. When Roe was decided, Roe struck down every state's abortion laws. None of them were as generous or liberal in terms of abortion rights as what the court came up with. Most states at that time said only to save the life of the mother. Some said life or health. That's where we were in 1972. If this opinion holds up as a final opinion, half the states may go back to something like that. But the other, in the other half of the states, the public in those states doesn't want that. And that, that difference um, is partly attributable to the effects that Roe has had for the past 50 years. And back to that constitutional question of, is it a constitutional right or is it something for the states? So when you take the politics out of it, that is what the court is supposed to be deciding. Absolutely right. Well, we will see what happens. Uh, obviously, a huge story that's uh, starting a revolution, really, uh, in the media and across the country. Well, with let's people. hope not. <laughs> well, a revolution of ideas, anyway, as they're starting to already put uh, barricades outside the Supreme Court and news conferences and protests are being held. So certainly, uh, if someone wanted an opportunity for the public to show their voices, I guess they got that opportunity by leaking this draft. That's right. Well, and the protesters, as you say, are out in force already. But remember, they were out in force after Justice Kavanaugh was confirmed at the court building. So that kind of demonstration is, I think, unfortunately becoming more, more frequent. Uh, you'll have a lot to talk to with your constitutional law students today. <laughs> Professor Gillis, thank you so much for your time coming to us from Quinnipiac University. My pleasure, Karen. And stay tuned for full reports throughout the day on Eyewitness News at noon and again in the evening news starting at 4. Uh, and on, follow us on social media. We will be covering all of the fallout and impact across the country and here in Connecticut from uh, this draft report.